first dive on any shipwreck is always problematic but the gustav was especially so because here we had a huge ocean liner in relatively deep water it was totally dark down there our first dive we landed not on the wreck but off somewhere on the bottom it took us many minutes just to find the wreck and although i was prepared to find a wreck that didn't really resemble gustav i wasn't prepared for what i found it was a mass of twisted and broken steel, nothing that resembled a ship. It took us several minutes just to orient ourselves, to know where we were, to try and get a sense of what was the stern, what was the bow. But there was enough structure, even amongst that mass of metal, that I finally realized I was on the bow. Now I knew which way to go to dive on the stern, the area that Stefan had suggested would make the most interesting dive. And as we moved aft, we found more and more of the same, twisted and broken metal, evidence of, of a force way beyond nature. We saw evidence of cutting torches. We saw evidence of explosions that had burst outward from the hull. Something almost inexplicable had caused all this carnage. The next day, the team will make a second dive. Now that they know the orientation of the wreck, they have positioned themselves to dive the stern. When the Wilhelm Gustloff went down, she came to rest in approximately 42 meters of water. Descending on Gustloff in daylight was a totally different experience. And yet as we descended deeper and deeper and we lost all natural light, you're immediately taken back to that first dive. And all those psychological and emotional feelings that you had returned. I found myself now on the stern, a part of the ship that I completely recognized. The stern was really quite well preserved. It was what I had expected, and it, it's what you would expect from a wreck in the Baltic Sea. We were seeing a part of the ship that was very much like it was that night that it sank. Suspended in the water, we were looking up at unmistakable brass letters that spelled out Wilhelm Gustloff. I was looking up at that same name as if I was one of those passengers who saw that name and stood on the dock thinking that this would be their salvation. This would be their, their last chance out of Poland and back to their homeland, Germany. And then we ascended that deck, tipped hard to port, climbed towards the starboard side, over the starboard rail and down over that half section. And everywhere there was evidence of the fishing industry, the snarled nets, trawl nets and gill nets hanging everywhere. And, and all the while we were caught up in this sense of, of eeriness. And you could only see what your lights would illuminate it really was a, a frightening place. But everywhere now we could see the evidence of a live, vibrant ship. It really was quite well preserved. The teak of the deck, the wooden cap of the handrail. This is what we had expected to find. You really got a sense of the people who walked this deck, the people whose hand touched the same handrail, the people who descended on the same set of stairs. Before the ship sank, thousands of people would have attempted to reach the upper decks. Some of these people found rescue. As we descended that staircase, we moved from the upper deck down one deck level, and it still was that same vibrant ship. And of course, I wanted to see the evidence of the passengers, the people on board.
as I descended deeper into the ship, as I went from one deck level to another, I saw the fixtures and the fittings of the ship, the evidence of the washrooms and the cabins. I look for those those German officer uniforms that Stefan had told me about. None of that existed. As I ascended deeper, it became not unlike the, the center of the ship, twisted and broken. And then eventually we hit bottom. We were as far and as deeply penetrated into the ship as we could go. And when I hit bottom, I felt very uncomfortable. Not only was it a physically demanding dive, but it was demanding psychologically and emotionally. It wasn't unlike being in a graveyard at night. And although I felt this great sense of responsibility to be respectful, I, I really was uncomfortable there. If we were going to find evidence of the dead, this is where it would be. This is where perhaps thousands of people have been trapped and taken to the bottom with Guslov. And I had dove on many shipwrecks in the past and seen evidence of the dead. This was the Baltic. If, if a body of water would preserve evidence of, of those people, it would be here. And yet, there was no evidence of the dead. In fact, there was no evidence of passengers. There was none of their possessions. All the thousands of things you associate with those thousands of passengers were gone. There was nothing. You're left with this, this question, of where, where could it have gone? Certainly, it couldn't have drifted out of the ship. For some reason, the Guslov had been stripped of everything associated with humanity. Nobody knows the exact number of people carried to their deaths within the Guslov. A few, a very lucky few, found rescue. 